Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. What's up? This is the Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Hoppy. And I'm Ryan Stubridge. To get on the air and talk to us, it's not too hard. 630-403-5200. That's 630-403-5200. And if you're a bit shy but you want to communicate with us, I'm at Hoppy Radio 893 on Twitter. Super, I'm Rich. Where are you at? At Ryan Stubridge. And let's get the show going. He is a ringside announcer for many boxing events, and he is an anchor on ESPN 1000. Ray Flores is on SportstownChicago.com and a Friday Sports Riot. What's up, Ray? The two Ryans. Good evening, guys, from the Big Apple right across the street from Madison Square Garden. A nice. big fight weekend, a busy sports weekend that is taking place this weekend. I uh, have to love it, and honestly, very excited and thrilled to be here in New York City for ESPN Chicago and ESPN.com. That is huge for you since it's the biggest market. So now I want our audience to get to know you. So like when you're a ringside announcer, how much prep do you have to do? Because I feel like some people just think you turn on the mic and just announce the names. So how much prep does no. it take? You know what, Tom? This weekend I will not be ring announcing. Oh, okay. um, but normally I do ring announcing and yeah. I do commentary, but I am covering it for ESPN.com. We have... Um, I am hosting, I hosted uh, Making the Rounds with Dan Raphael, Brian Campbell, two brilliant writers yeah. from ESPN.com. We have the former Welterweight Champion of the World, Tim Bradley, on breaking down the fight tomorrow night. And then uh, also tomorrow night we will have coverage after the fight uh, for ESPN.com. So brilliant staff, Andres Ferrari, uh, Brian Campbell, Dan Raphael. So really, we're all on top of it trying to do what we can from top to bottom. But as a ring announcer and a commentator, it's a lot of work beforehand. You have to really prep yourself. I'm actually going to be he- headed back to uh, New York City. We're actually going to be in nearby Brooklyn next week for Ruslan Provodnikov, Chris Algeria. I'll be doing the undercards for HBO, yeah. for the HBO undercards. So excited about being back at uh, in Brooklyn and looking forward to being at the Barclays Center. But first things first, guys, Miguel Cotto, Sergio Martinez, the middleweight championship of the world is on the line. So looking forward to being inside the garden for the first time. Now, what should fans look for this fight? How is this going to go down? What is your take? Well, it's a tough fight because Sergio Martinez hasn't lost in five years. Miguel Cotto is trying to become the first Puerto Rican fighter to win a title in four different weight divisions. And if you know anything about boxing, guys, Puerto Rico has such a large history and a rich tradition when it comes to the sweet science. So for Miguel Cotto to do something that Wilfredo Benitez and Felix Quito Trinidad, who's actually getting inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame on Sunday afternoon in nearby Canastotum, would be a huge achievement and would be a massive event for all of Puerto Rico. Plus, the next day on Sunday is the Puerto Rican parade that is held here in New York City. So the fans are here they're excited. They are amped up for their home, their home country, their countrymen, and Miguel Cotto to go out there and possibly get a victory. However, the Argentine fans came and are really looking forward to supporting Sergio Martinez. Martinez has had a battle with a right knee injury. He's actually had a surgery back a couple months ago. Hasn't been able to fully train, and you know, about two months. It's been, you know, he's only been able to run and stuff. So only you know, over the past two months has he been able to run and fully condition himself. But he seems to be ready to go. I just saw them. I just got out of the wings about, I'd have to say, a couple hours ago. And both look in great shape. Both look ready to go. And tomorrow night, it's going to be nothing but fireworks inside MSG. And uh, what are some of the best skills that Miguel Cotto and Sergio Martinez have uh, for this fight tomorrow? Well, Miguel Cotto is a notorious body puncher. I mean, he can kick to the body and has some outstanding body punching. He has this seek-and-destroy attitude, trained by Freddie Roach, and Freddie Roach is the six-time 
uh, Boxing Writers Association of the Year Trainer of the Year. So Freddie Roach, without question, is a Hall of Fame trainer and actually went into Canastota, I believe, last year. So he has Freddie Roach in his corner. Miguel Cotto seems to be the happiest he's ever been when it comes to trainers. He kind of flipped around with trainers a lot once his father passed away. Um, he necessarily didn't have that big of a presence. He parted ways with Evangelista Cotto as well. And then he went over to Emmanuel Stewart and then, you know, messed around. Not messed around, but partook with Pedro Diaz, who was the former coach of the Cuban National Amateur Boxing Team. And Cuba has a large, rich amateur tradition. But now it seems like Miguel is listening to all instructions. He's not dictating how his training camps are going. Sergio Martinez, his trainer, probably Sarmiento, has been with him for a very long time. Martinez has been dominating the middleweight division for, as I mentioned, about five years. His last loss coming against Paul Williams. He redeemed that with a second-round knockout that was one of the most lethal knockouts that you can ever see in combat sports. So, Sergio Martinez is the good, but the question is, guys, is will the right knee hold up for Sergio Martinez? Earlier in the week on Monday, they did not allow uh, Sir Miguel Cotos Kemp put in a complaint mm-hmm. stating that Sergio Martinez could not use a knee brace, so the New York State Athletic Commission, led by Malvina Lathan, are not allowing Sergio Martinez to use the knee brace. However, they are allowing him to use a knee sleeve. But the question is, Sergio Martinez is a slick boxer. He's a softball, which means he fights with his left hand, uh, you know, as his power punch. So he's going to have that right leg forward and try to jab, and he puts his hands down, and he invites guys in. But Martinez is a terrific boxer. I think he's a better boxer stylistically than Miguel Cotto. But Miguel Cotto has a, as I mentioned, devastating body punching, and will the ability... Will Martinez be able to move around the ring and utilize every square inch of the squared circle in order to get away from the pressure of Miguel Cotto? That's what we're going to find out tomorrow night. So, uh, overall, who do you think is going to win this fight tomorrow? Do you think Miguel Cotto or Sergio Martinez? It all depends, Ryan, or Ryan, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Martinez's leg holds up, I think he wins the fight. Cotto right now that I saw on the sports books, and I'm not, I'm not advocating betting, but if you are of age and want to do so, right now what I saw the odds are it's plus 175 for Miguel Cotto. So that's, that's an interesting bet. But I still think that Sergio Martinez is so crafty, he's so smart, he's wise, and people are doubting the health of Sergio Martinez's knee. I think Martinez is so smart and so astute in regards to the sweet science, a little bit smarter than Miguel Cotto, that he catches Miguel coming in because we've talked to some fighters, and Brian Campbell specifically has had some discussions with former Sergio Martinez opponents, and they state that Martinez's his punches don't necessarily on on first when he first hits you, they they don't overtake you. They're not like oh my goodness, this guy has devastating power, and then from one minute to the next, you get comfortable or you, he's just so slick that you walk into a shot and then you wake up and you're knocked out. And I think the same rule will apply to Miguel Cotto, that Cotto, he's, he's going to have, this building is going to break the attendance record for Madison Square Garden regards to boxing, dating back to Miguel Cotto and Tony Margarito about two to three years ago. So with that being said, I think Cotto is going to have the crowd on his side. I know that for a fact uh, just by being here at Wayne's, but Cotto is right. going to push the pace of the fight He's going to make it a very close fight distance-wise, but then he's going to get caught by something that Martinez, a trap that he's able to kind of throw out there for him. And then Sergio Martinez blocks him with that left hand. Cotto goes down, and then we see a late stoppage in the 10th or 11th round, and Sergio Martinez will retain the WBC middleweight championship of the world. Now, Ray, moving on, this is a bit off topic, but I want to get your take on it since you're a big boxing fan. What is your take on Floyd Mayweather overall as a boxer, and where do you think he ranks all time? I think he is the greatest fighter of our generation. Is he the greatest fighter of all time? I think the jury is still out. Because with the exception of the fight against Marcos Maidana, we haven't seen Floyd in any imminent danger. What happens 
when Floyd gets into danger territory and he really has to possibly get that late knockout to solidify the victory throughout the course of boxing and throughout the course of combat sports. And I hate to say it, but Mayweather is being penalized for how good he is. But the reason why I don't think he is being talked about in the uh, same discussion as Muhammad Ali as Sugar Ray Leonard, as Sugar Ray Robinson, is Mayweather has never had where his back's against the wall and you're going to the 11th or 12th round, and he needs a definitive stoppage. Oscar De La Hoya, who used to co-promote uh, Mayweather fights, and De La Hoya's company, Golden Boy Promotions, has been dropped from co-promoting Golden Boy or Mayweather fights now because of the resignation of former Golden Boy CEO Richard Schaefer. Mayweather had a strong relationship with Richard Schaefer now that Schaefer's gone. Golden Boy Promotions is out of the picture when it comes to promoting Mayweather fights. But just to answer your point, I think he'd have to be top 10, but I don't think he's top 5 because we've never seen Mayweather in the 11th and 12th round. That's for us to say Mayweather needs a knockdown or a knockout because he's never been in that position. If he's ever in that position and he does it, then he kind of catapults himself up to top 5 in my book. Now, Ray, moving on to the NBA Finals from last night, what was your take as the Spurs beat the Heat? Well, um, kudos to the San Antonio Spurs electricians for having right. the electricity go off because <laughs> right. it benefited San Antonio. It's different. I, I'm kind of I, I saw that yes, LeBron did leave, and and it it, it could be a a blow to his legacy. But, guys, it's tough to play with the crap. And, and I know people are going to talk about it's tough and it's whatever. But where I think the fall or the blame should fall, so to speak, is on the, the trainers, the entire, the, the doctors that the Miami Heat employ. Those guys I would give a pink slip to or have a stern talking to because everybody on both sides were playing with in the extreme heat. How do you not give your best player the IV fluids heading in when you have the IV fluids there? When you're a pro athlete, especially at the NBA, NFL, NHL level, you have the best doctors, you have the best of everything, medicine, all of it. It's there at your disposal, and if it's not there, you can find it within 15 to 20 minutes. How do you not wake up and say, hey, LeBron may need some fluids or an IV fluid or let's really kind of have him drink the water. Now, LeBron going in and kind of his comments afterwards, that's LeBron James, guys. Yeah. You know, he, he's not uh, a media darling. He, he, he is who he is. And he has a lack of mental toughness that is evident in late game situations when he decides to pass the ball off to other guys. No offense. But I want my main man having the ball in his hands in critical situations. I don't want him dishing the ball off to Chris Bosch. I don't want him dishing the ball off to Mario Chalmers. I don't want him dishing the ball off to the ball boy. And that's what LeBron tends to do. Is he very good over stretches? Yes. But is he the man when the game is on the line? The answer which we have seen in critical situations, has been no credit to him for winning two NBA titles, which is something that Reggie Miller, Charles Barkley, I'm here in New York right across the street from where this man was very successful, Patrick Ewan, yep. couldn't win the big one. But let us not forget, gentlemen, both Ryans, <laughs> that these guys did not have two other All-Stars on their team or did not go to other places because it was a little bit too warm or it was um, uh, the heat was a little bit too intensive in terms of winning in your own backyard. Wherever you decide to go, and I think we can even talk about Johnny Manziel, and, and I'm going to bring up Manziel because I like his tenacity. Manziel has no problems going to Cleveland and says we're going to win in Cleveland. If he leaves to go somewhere else for bigger superstars, then I'll, I'll talk about Manziel the same way I do about Le- LeBron James. It got a little bit too hot in Cleveland, and LeBron James had to leave, and which is why he's in Miami and he's being coddled. LeBron, this is the NBA. 
man up. You're not a steel worker. You're not a mine worker. Thank you. Buckle your chin strap. Go out there and put yourself on the line. I'm sorry you have a cramp, but get fluids in your system and get right back out there. And LeBron didn't do that. Again, and I hate to be this guy, but guess what, gentlemen? I could be this guy. Michael wouldn't do that. Magic wouldn't do it. Larry wouldn't do it. My, I rest my case. Completely agree with you. And uh, also, what do you think the Spurs need to do to uh, pull off this series win and get their fifth ring? Well, what they have to do is they have to shut off all the role players. I mean, it's pretty much um, you have to limit what Mario Chalmers does. You have to limit uh, Chris Bosh had a good game yesterday. You have to limit what guys like a Chris Bosh, what a Ray Allen, what a Dwayne Wade are able to do. LeBron's going to get his points, fine. But it can't, guys. LeBron doesn't want the ball when it gets hot. Right. So if LeBron is doing well and the role players are kind of shut down, it's all about confidence, guys. You look at when Ray Allen lit it up last year in that atrocity that was, I believe, game one or game two down in Miami last year's finals. Guys are about confidence. Guys are about rhythm. You limit what Bosch and Allen and Wade are able to do, Again, it's, LeBron is the head, but you don't necessarily have to take off the head and the body will fall. LeBron isn't strong enough to put the game on his shoulders, with the exception of Game 6. This is dating back a couple of years ago when the Heat were trailing the Boston Celtics. He took over that game, and that's a, a legacy game, in my opinion. But aside from that, there are not many games that stand out to say, oh my goodness, LeBron came out and scored 45, 50 points, and he made everybody else better. You shut off Bosch, you shut off Wade, you shut off Mario Chalmers, even a Battier, who to me is just a joke that he throws out his legs all the time, but that's just me. And I think he's a very unlikable guy, and maybe I'm the only guy to believe that in sports media. But I think that you go ahead. If you shut off the role players, LeBron, let him score 35 to 40. But 35 to 40 coupled with 10, 15 years isn't going to equate to a W. Now, Ray, where can people find your work online and on the radio? Ryan, all they can do, my man, what they can, they can go to Ray Flores 86 follow me on Twitter. You can go on Instagram, at Ray Flores 1986 find me on Facebook. Also, I will be on Chicago's game night, Monday night from 7 to 10. Also, check out ESPN.com. Go to the boxing page. We have the Making the Rounds preview with Tim Bradley, Dan Rayfield, Brian Campbell. We'll have it covered. All weekend long, looking forward to being in the garden for Cotto Martinez live on HBO pay per view tomorrow. Here's another tip, guys. Um, the undercards, the, yeah. the other three fights are not that good. So you can literally kind of follow my Twitter. And when I'm letting you guys know, hey, main event's coming up in about 15 minutes, if you then want to order the pay per view, knock your socks off. Do that. <laughs> because the other three fights you don't have to watch. This is a one fight card. This is one of the rare exceptions. In recent memory in boxing, where this is one fight that matters and that everything else is uh, not so good. Enjoy your pizza. Enjoy watching the NHL Stanley Cup final. Not finals, guys, because that is not correct, as we all know. And then, uh, yeah, so watch the NHL Stanley Cup final with the Rangers and the Kings. And then follow me on Twitter at RayFlores86 when I'm letting you guys know that the main event is about 15 minutes away. You don't want to miss it because that is going to be one crazy atmosphere to watch. And I think it's going to be a fantastic battle at the Garden tomorrow night. Well, Ray, have a good weekend up in the Big Apple, and we'd love to have you on the Friday Sports Riot here on SportstownChicago.com yeah. again. The Ryan's always a pleasure, gentlemen. It was like, I think what you guys are doing are fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Sports Ray. Town Chicago. Big fan of what Pete and everybody at Kim and Courtney and everybody's doing at Sports Town Chicago. I think it's marvelous. And uh, really looking forward to a busy weekend here in the Big Apple. A lot of work, guys. I'm hoping to... Uh, take a tour of Times Square and, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe have a beverage or two. Yeah, sounds um, fun. If, you know, since I'm of age. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens, guys. So we'll have a pop or two, and then I will test the theory on Chicago hot dogs or uh, New York hot dogs and New York pizza against Chicago style. So okay. we'll have a great one, guys. Follow me on Twitter at RayFlores86. Keep doing a great job, gentlemen. Thanks, and I look forward to talking with you in the coming weeks. Thanks for coming on, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Take care, guys. And that was Ray Flores. He is a ringside announcer for many boxing events 
And you can check him out with Jonathan Hood on Chicago's Game Night this Monday from 7 to 10 p.m. on ESPN 1000. Call the show, 630-403-5200. That's 630-403-5200. If you have some opinions about what Ray Flores said, and if you want to discuss who you think is going to win this big fight this weekend, up in the Big Apple, Miguel Cotto or Sergio Martinez. All right, we are going to come back, catch up on breaks, and up next is Rafer Weigel on the Friday Sports Riot. We will be right back. Hang on. The Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. 